Hi, Alan Stratton from Aswood Turns. I've been meaning to make one of these bowls for a while. I'm not sure exactly what to call it, so I'm going to call it a small mouth bowl because it has a wide rim, but a very tiny little bowl here and a very tiny little base, which means it can't hold anything, which means it should be quite valuable because value is inversely to what it, its utility. But one thing I did use that may be of interest in this is a Richeson atomizer. It's how I sprayed the dye on the surface of it. And uh, it's actually a very simple little device. It comes with a little hinge. And then you blow on this. And as you blow through this, the air that you're blowing through creates a vacuum at the top of this vertical tube, which you have in your dye, and sucks the dye up and sprays it out onto the surface. Definitely not as precise as an airbrush, but it is a good way to deliver the finish to the surface. So this is a richest anatomizer. I don't think you should pay more than about five bucks for it if you shop, do your shopping. So we'll use that to make this small mouth bowl. I am not sure what species of wood this is. The wood is very light in color, so it needs something to make it more interesting. I'm planning to use alcohol-based dyes and a very different bowl design to make it stand out. With a small hollow and a small base, it is practically useless. Therefore, it should be quite valuable. I'm mounting the wood, whatever it is, to a screw chuck, then tracing a circle on the spindle side before making a trip to the bandsaw to cut an approximate circle. I like to leave it very large so that I don't accidentally make it smaller than planned. Then with the wood remounted to the lathe, I do a quick check on the chuck jaw sizes. I plan to use my usual jaws for a tenon mount while I turn the top side and smaller jaws for an expansion mount while I turn the foot. Now. I'll proceed to shape the bottom with my large bowl gouge. Even though I have a rough circle, I'm cutting from the bottom side since this is side grain and much easier to cut than alternating end grain. Tooling directly to the perimeter is always a rough go. Much easier from the side grain. I also need a tenon plus another tenon-like bump that gu helps guide my eye for the shape of the bottom. With most of the wood removed, I switch to shear scraping to refine the curve and smooth out the rough spots. This wood likes to tear out. With the shaping completed, I'm power sanding up through the grits. Now I can reverse the bowl onto the tenon I just cut. Again, with the large bowl gouge, I'm addressing the top side. For this design, I only want a slight convex dome for now. With so little wood to remove, it isn't long before I'm shear scraping to refine the surface. I don't care about the screw hole on the center right now. Then power sand up through the grits. And mask off the back side of the bowl and my lathe. While the mustard color is not great, adding random other colors would not improve it. Now using a Richeson atomizer, I'm blowing red dye onto the top surface. After it dried a little bit, I power sanded the top with 400 grit paper. I'm not sure it did much because the paper loaded up very quickly. Now I'm blowing yellow dye in the center portion of the top. I'm only getting a hint of orange. Perhaps I should have sanded more of the red off with a coarser grit paper. I put the dye on somewhat heavy. Now I'm letting it run towards the perimeter. I'd like to see if there's any effect from the runs. Finally, I sprayed it with Rattle Clan lacquer to seal the dye, then let it dry during lunch. This is about the best I could do with an an atomizer instead of an airbrush. Now after a good lunch, I'm marking a size for the center hollow based on my smaller jaw size. I want the hollow to be barely bigger than the jaws for an expansion hold. 
otherwise the hull will be tiny. I'm not sure what this bowl can hold. Then I'm hollowing it, starting with a large bowl gouge, followed by a round nose scraper. After sanding the hollow, I'm going to the back side of the lathe to cut a shallow groove in the side, then disguise it as a bead. This will be the final mounting point. Then reverse the bowl again, this time with an expansion mount on my small jaws. It's now time to do the final shaping on the foot. After sanding it, I discover some tear out and tool it a bit more until I realize that the tear out is probably wormholes. They will have to do. I'm using my pyrography setup to sign the bottom, then lightly sand it again and add a couple of very shallow grooves. After several coats of rattle can lacquer, I'll buff it and call it complete. There's my small mouth bowl. The very plain wood needed some color to dress it up. I did not get much orange color. The red is too intense. There is some orange flavor. The bowl is almost useless between the small hollow and the small base. Without utility, it must speak with color and visual interest. Still, I like it and happy that I turned it. That's it for this small mouth bowl. Please give this video a thumbs up, subscribe on my website, tell your friends and send me your comments and questions. Every week I make a new wood turning video. Please wear your full face shield. Goggles are not enough protection. Until next week's video, this is Alan Stratton from As Wood Turns.